and uh, participate in this MWC short. Uh, today we're talking about digital supply chains of the future. Uh, my name is Jason Berryhill with Invisible. Um, at Invisible we source and market uh, sustainable food uh, and a big part of uh, sourcing, uh, um, responsible sourcing and verifying sustainability within a supply chain is ensuring products are fully traceable. And for that we've built our own in-house traceability system called Whole Chain. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Whole Chain and some of the projects we're working on. Uh, and my goal is to answer three essential questions for supply chain innovation within food systems. Uh, the first one is, what does digital supply chain innovation have to do with mobile? Uh, next, why should we collect data about a product's journey? And finally, uh, where is the future going for digital supply chains? Uh, and to the first question, I have this slide. Um, what does supply chain innovation have to do with mobile? You see this slide, and this is sort of what you might imagine when you think about a modern supply chain, only maybe you'd have sensors in each of these containers. Uh, or maybe inside the warehouse, you might see drones flying and uh, scanning for RFID tags or scanning for different barcodes. You might see a lot of technology and automation happening. Uh, within food systems, though, this, this is a, a good picture of what is a modern supply chain. Uh, you have someone there doing very difficult work, a challenging task. They've got sticky gloves on. They're, you know, they're, they're holding, uh, in this case, a fish, but it could be a, a, a farmed crop. It could be any number of things. But the point is that they don't have time to pull out some digital device to take uh, data. But we still need that data at later points in the supply chain. And, and what's important is that none of this is going to change. The last thing we want is for our food to come from uh, you know, factories, right? And so we, we, want, uh, we want our food to come from places that are slightly off-grid. And that means more rural locations, uh, less uh, digital connectivity, less uh, availability of digital devices, and, and sometimes even less familiarity from the users. Uh, now, that being said, that doesn't mean that, that within these supply chains, they're not already using technology, and they're not already familiar and capable of, of using technology that we introduce. Uh, for example, this picture is uh, from Bristol Bay, Alaska. That's Northline Seafoods. They actually won an award for innovation at Stanford called uh, Fish 2.0 back in 2017. Um, and we're now tracing a million pounds of their salmon all the way to retail. This is a shrimp co-op in rural Mexico. Uh, it is part of a project we're working on with Fairtrade USA. Uh, the company is called Del Pacifico. And these shrimp are actually on shelves now at a grocer called New Seasons Market in the US Pacific Northwest. And, and what we're talking about here isn't just seafood, even though uh, seafood is where we tend to focus quite a lot. Uh, this is uh, a farmer co-op in rural Africa, uh, harvesting a very important uh, commodity for a large consumer, uh, uh, consumer brand. Um, so in each of these situations, you have, yeah, sometimes low or no connectivity and uh, older devices and less digital, uh, and, uh, digital familiarity. So here's some of the learnings and takeaways that we've had uh, in this process. First, and it probably goes without saying, is simplicity and user experience are critical. Um, you know, like you saw earlier, you have people that have, uh, they're, they're doing very uh, important tasks, they're doing very challenging tasks, and sometimes they have gloves on, and yet we still need to be able to capture that data. Uh, just to give you a, a sense of, of uh, how challenging that can be, the, the picture you saw earlier of the fishermen that they offload as many as 10,000 pounds in seven minutes uh, on, onto their boat. And at the same time, we want to capture data right there at the point of capture so that we can better understand the conditions all the way through the supply chain. So uh, we give ourselves a standard of about 30 seconds. And usually, we'll use something like a QR code that, that can be scanned and immediately fill in the static data that's from those fishers. Uh, the shrimp co-op you saw earlier, that had as many as 37 key data elements all taken right there on the spot. They input the weight, and off it goes. And now we've got a digitized record that can follow the product uh, through the supply chain. Data must be structured to be useful. Uh, it can't just be uh, coming in from a WhatsApp stream or um, you know, any you know, uh, regular app. It needs to be structured and useful for later points of retail uh, and, and support industry standards such as GS1. Uh, with Whole Chain, we support GS1 standards. And it was specifically in seafood, we support the, the recent guidance from the Global Dialogue on Seafood Traceability, which also leans heavily on GS1. 
data inputs need to be flexible. The real value in the future of, of these digitized supply chains is all the ancillary data we'll take in addition to that which is necessary for traceability. Things like carbon footprint, things like um, uh, additional elements of quality, th things like social conditions along the way where, where people fairly trade in that, uh, fairly paid in that supply chain. And so uh, the, the data capture, it needs to be flexible enough so that brands can, can capture what they need in order to uh, continually um, see new metrics. Uh, we've created a drag and drop template system just for capturing data along each node in the supply chain for this purpose. And finally, data should be validated along the product journey. Um, we're currently working with groups like Where Food Comes From and Fair Trade USA on innovating new processes for validating um, data on a more real-time basis with whole chain. Um, we also have a collaboration with MasterCard using their blockchain uh, so that uh, each record along the chain of custody is immutably stored uh, so that you, you can see, go back and see that chain of custody and no one can go back and, and change those records. So why is it important to collect data about a product's journey? Uh, there is technology now such as DNA analysis, uh, microfiber analysis that can tell you where something came from or if it's a certain species. So why is it important to get the take measurements all along the way? Um, for one, consumers care more and more about not only the products they're buying, but also the overall footprint that those products have as they go from uh, the point of production to the point of consumption. Um, but we, we feel on a number of levels the journey matters. Uh, where a product is at the moment uh, that you need it, for example, in a supply chain, if you're waiting on a shipment from a vendor. Social indicators, like I mentioned earlier, fair wages, um, uh, other types of indicators that can tell you, is this a supply chain that I'm uh, responsibly sourcing from? Uh, environmental indicators, like I mentioned, with uh, carbon footprint, and then freshness and product quality. The more we can measure throughout a product's lifestyle, uh, life cycle through a supply chain, the better that we can start to make improvements, increase shelf life, increase freshness and quality. So understanding the journey allows brands and enterprises to increase efficiency and resilience while better identifying risks. Uh, and armed with this understanding, they could be more transparent about their data within supply chains. And as you can see, uh, the, the Food Marketing Institute uh, estimates that 75% of consumers say that uh, they will switch brands to provide more in-depth information about their product. They'll switch brands that provide more in-depth information about their products. So the world's food supply chains are critical to achieving the sustainable development goals. I've placed a QR code here that links to an FAO report that outlines 20 different actions that intersect all of the, uh, all of the sustainable development goals uh, when taken. And we also partner with the World Food Program's SDG2 Advocacy Hub uh, to connect actions that enterprises are taking uh, to supply chains uh, for the global goals. Uh, this is an incredible opportunity for, uh, for mobile operators. There's, we're really just on the cusp of digitizing these supply chains and connecting where this can go uh, in terms of, of how we are uh, addressing the glo global goals. Uh, so we see this as a, as a real opportunity going forward. And finally, where's this future of uh, digital supply chains going? So currently, uh, supply chain digitization and traceability, those are the big issues because we don't have them. Right now, it's shocking how little information we really have about the food products we consume. Uh, but we're getting more and more. But as that continues, then we can make the real steps forward toward progress. So that's uh, better quality and longer shelf life, improved assurance of quality. You know, our, our, our use by dates right now, they're really informed guesses. And to be able to have, uh, to have data backed indicators that can tell us when something will go bad and when we can eat a product for its maximum freshness, you know, these things will be more and more available as we continue to digitize supply chains. And most of all, we'll have integrated experiences. Uh, this, uh, you know, having a full chain of custody where we can see the data through the supply chain and we can monitor these things. Um, we see a future where consumers will be connected to that data and they'll be able to make better decisions on what they buy as well as uh, when they eat it and, and how they consume it even. So to close things, uh, I want to talk about one of the, 
the groups that we're working with uh, called Topco, which is the nation's largest, the, the U.S.'s largest grocery co-op, consisting of about 50 members. Um, and we're working with Topco on their seafood, uh, across their seafood lines for their full circle market brand uh, to show uh, full traceability for all of these seafood products. So uh, we have a video that can, can show you a little bit more about that. The journey of our seafood is not simple. There's an endless list of factors that impact quality and sustainability in a supply chain. It's no longer enough to use buzzwords like sustainable, responsible, and fresh. Today's consumers expect substance to back up these claims. At Full Circle Market, we believe the journey of our food matters. That's why we're using Whole Chain, a traceability system that links suppliers, processors, food brands and grocers to track seafood from the source to the store. With Whole Chain, users rapidly capture important data using almost any device. Data accumulates as products change hands along the supply chain. A digital record follows the product all the way to the store, and each transaction is immutably recorded on a blockchain. As a result, supply chains can use valuable data to reduce waste and improve quality food buyers can verify product claims. Procurement teams can use mapping and other tools for planning and analysis. And brands and retailers can communicate product stories to their consumers with scannable experiences at the point of sale. Using Whole Chain, Full Circle Market will earn trust by adding substance to its claims. Full Circle Market, in season year round.